Okay, so let's take a moment and review the formula we picked up back in chapter two for z-scores. All right, so a z-score corresponding to a particular value is value minus mean over standard deviation. So the z-score tells us how many standard deviations our value is away from the mean. It is positive or negative according to whether values lie above or below the mean. And another thing to keep in mind is that z-scores, they take data from different scales, all right, different distributions, and they put them on a common scale, and it allows us to compare data from different distributions. And we're gonna see an example of that in example six. All right, but it's important. So we can take these numbers that come from completely different graphs and put them on a common scale, which we're ultimately going to call the standard normal distribution. And when you hear standard normal distribution, it means we're making a normal bell curve, but z-scores are on our x-axis. All right, so let's review this concept here. And we had this question back in chapter two, I believe. So the average cost per ounce for glass cleaner is 7.7 cents with a standard deviation of 2.5 cents. What is the z-score of Windex with a cost of 10.1 cents per ounce? So I'm getting asked for z-score, all right? And they're telling me Windex is 10.1 cents per ounce. So right away, I can see that Windex costs more than average. All right, it's a name brand. It costs more than average. All right, no problem. But every z-score you ever give me is going to be a value minus a mean over a standard deviation. All right, let me put that in the middle just so it looks a little better. All right, there we go. So in this case, Windex, its value was 10.1. I'm going to subtract from that the average cost of 7.7 .7 cents per ounce and I'm gonna divide that by 2.5 cents because that was the standard deviation. So now, remember when we were talking about deviating, we're deviating from the mean. So let's look at that numerator of 10.1 minus 7.7. .7. So it's 2.4. So what this is saying, 2.4 in ratio to 2.5. So Windex, it's 2.4 cents more than the average glass cleaner, right? It deviates from the mean by 2.4. Now the average deviation from this 7.7 .7 was 2.5 cents. So Windex is almost an entire standard deviation above the mean. So we're gonna look at this ratio, right? And the units on this are cents per ounce and ratio to cents per ounce. So they wind up canceling as well. Let me go ahead and just write that out since this is a well, it's technically the second time we're looking at it, but we haven't done it since chapter two. So this is cents per ounce over cents per ounce. So these units are gonna wind up canceling and z-scores don't have units to them. They're just a standardized score. So we'll do 2.4 in ratio to 2.5. And it should be a number pretty close to one. 0.96 is close to one because this was almost one standard deviation above the mean, right? The Windex was 2.4 cents over average and the standard deviation is 2.5 cents over average. So it was pretty close to one standard deviation above the mean. Okay. All right, so now let's use z-scores to compare data from two completely different sets of numbers and get them on a common scale. All right, so if I can get them on a common scale, then I can compare them. So let's take a look at this. It says, a student who took two national aptitude tests in the course of applying for admission to colleges. All right, the national average and standard deviation were 475 and 100, respectively, for the first test, and 30 and 8 for the second test. The student scored 625 on the first test, 45 on the second test. You use z-scores to determine which, on which exam the student performed better. All right, so this student is taking these tests that are on completely different scales, right? You see one is got, this first one's got an average of 475, and then the second one's got an average of 30. So how can we tell? Is 625 a better score than 45? I mean, it's definitely larger, but, but what's the better score, relatively speaking? All right, and in terms of the variable here, right, these are test scores. That's, that's what's varying for this student. What are the test scores? So if I want to take a look at this, all right, 
I'll call this test one, all right? It's got an average of, what did they tell us? 475 and a standard deviation of 100, right? And on test two, this one had the average of, what was it, 30? All right, and a standard deviation of eight. I'll put equal signs there. All right, so which, which test did this student score better? It said use z-scores, because what z-scores will do is it'll take this 625 and scale it to this data, and it'll take the 45 and scale it to this data. So we'll get these two numbers put onto a common scale and be able to compare which test this student performed better on. So the z-score of the first test, all right? So this student's value was 625, the average was 475, and the standard deviation was 100. So let's crunch that number and see what the student's z-score was for the first test. So 625 minus 475. So this student scored 150 points over the average. Right? So on this first test, the student deviated by 150 points, where the average deviation was just 100 points. So this student actually deviated more than average. Now, 150 in a ratio to the standard deviation is about 1.5. So on this first test, this student was one and a half standard deviations above the mean. That was this student's z-score. Let's figure out what happened for the z-score of test two. All right, so we were told this student scored 45, where the average was 30, and the standard deviation was eight. All right, so for this numerator, we can do this in our head, 45 minus 30 is 15, right? So this student scored 15 points above average. Now in ratio to the standard deviation, we can see that's almost two standard deviations, right? So this student above average by 15 points, deviated by 15 points where the average deviation was eight points. So we've got 15 in ratio to eight is giving us 1.875. All right, so the standard deviation here was 1.875. Now, it says use z-scores to determine on which exam the student performed better. When you're talking about taking tests, we want to score above average, right? That's something where you want to score higher. Higher scores tend to be better scores. So in this case, yes, the student scored 625 here and only 45 here, but relatively speaking, if we look at this student's z-score, the student scored better on this second exam because the z-score was higher, all right? So student scored better on second exam because the z-score was higher. And it won't always be the case that you want the higher z-score. It really depends on the context of the question. Um, so for example, if I was playing golf, I would want a lower z-score because in golf, the lower you score, the better you play. Or if I was racing, like if I was in um, a mile race, I would want my z-score to be lower because when you're racing, lower times mean you're faster, right? So it really depends on the context of the question as to whether you want to have a higher z-score or a lower z-score. But when we're taking tests, we typically want higher z-scores. Okay, so with that, we're gonna look at our first main normal distribution and we're gonna call it, the not where, everybody calls it the standard normal distribution. So let's take a look at this thing. When you hear me say standard normal, I want you to think, my x-axis actually has z-scores on it. So when you see, there's a z right here, okay? So the standard normal distribution is a normal distribution of standardized values called z-scores, all right? So when you hear standard normal graph, it's a normal graph where we have z-scores on the x-axis. It is centered at zero with a standard deviation of one, always. So that means one, excuse me, not one, zero is always below the peak. And we will scale our z-axis Right? If I go three up and three back, 
with the numbers 1, 2, 3, and then negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and I'm going to keep on jumping by 1. So 0 plus 1, 1. 1 plus 1, 2. 2 plus 1, 3. And this is typically how we scale our x-axis. Now since we're on the standard normal distribution, I'm going to call it the z-axis. All right, so we will say z-scores, they graph out with the bell curve. They're approximately normally shaped. Zero is always below the peak. So always below the peak for the z's is zero. All right, the standard deviation is always one. So I want you to hear me and I'll repeat it. Z-scores, the standard normal, zero is always below the peak. One is always the standard deviation. All right, that's why it's standard normal because this is the standard. When we get into regular normal curves, these numbers will change every problem. All right, so we're gonna pick up some calculator commands on the next example. I'll see you in a bit, bye.